The Jeep Wrangler is an incredibly capable vehicle, and this thing in this white looks stunning. I gotta say, I saw a purple one on the lot though, and it looks pretty neat all at the same time. Now, underneath the hood of the Wrangler, we've got a series of different options for engine choices. So we're all the way from the regular two liter, we've got the 3.6 liter Pentastar, you've got a turbo diesel down in the States, and then the 6.4 liter Hemi V8, you're gonna find inside of the Rubicon 392. Now this is gonna be a pretty in-depth video and you're gonna learn everything you need to know about the Jeep Wrangler. If you're looking for something specific, like how to use the 4xe system, or if you're looking for a 4xe specifically, check down in the description of the video because you'll be able to find the build link for this specific Wrangler. You'll also be able to find the contact information for Pickering Jeep, who were nice enough to give me this vehicle for the afternoon to shoot the video for you today. So if you're looking for a Chrysler Dodge Jeep vehicle, Pickering, these guys are fantastic to work with, so absolutely recommend checking them out. You know, getting underneath the hood of the Wrangler is straightforward, so no release on the inside. It's actually stunning the outside here. So along both sides, we've got these little releases. It slid off fairly easily for me there, but if not, we've got two different clips. So we've got our main safety clip, and then another one just kind of as like an emergency latch. So we just make sure both of those are removed. And then as we lift up, we've got a little bar in the middle there. We're just going to release it off to the right side. And then this one. Ugh. Just a regular prop bar. But I mean, you saw there, very easy in order to open this thing up. Now, this engine is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. And it's the same engine we're going to find in a lot of other Jeep and Dodge vehicles. Fantastic engine. Power-wise, it pushes out 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. So, an impressive amount of power, and it can handle pretty much anything you're going to throw at it, which is fantastic. But, looking at the Wrangler lineup in general, we've got the option for the 3.6 Pentastar. We also have the option for this one with e-torque. And one of the big benefits with the e-torque system is it gives you a lot more launch torque. So, if you're going to be pulling a boat, or you're doing a little bit more rock crawling, things like that, having that e-torque system is really beneficial. But we've got a series of different engine choices underneath the hood of the Wrangler. We've got the 2.0-liter turbocharge. We've got the two types of 3.6 Pentastars. We've got the 6.4-liter Hemi V8, we'll find in the Rubicon 392. And then in the States, you also have the option for the 3.0-liter diesel. Turbo diesel, I should say. Unfortunately, you're not going to find the diesel up in Canada, but it still is nice that that engine is available inside of this stove. So which way you go is going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle you're in and what your needs are. Like, are you looking for the six-speed manual? Because if you are, it's not available across the board. You have to be in a specific trim level with a specific engine. So it's going to depend on what you want out of your Jeep. But, I mean, this is nice underneath. We don't have much of an engine cover. Like, we've got a teeny little bit of components there that are covered off. But we at least have our heat shield over top, which is great. If you're technically inclined, doing some things yourself, we can easily top up fluids as necessary. We could easily check our oil, change our oil as necessary as well. But one thing, I've been stressing it a little bit more in a lot of my videos recently. You want to make sure that you're at least regularly changing the oil, but also regularly maintaining it. Like, it actually, it's kind of mind-blowing how many people don't regularly maintain their cars. If you want the best possible life out of your car, make sure you take it in for regularly scheduled maintenance. Like, at a bare minimum, change the oil regularly, but you definitely want to make sure you're performing regular maintenance to get the best life out of your car, but also to make sure that your manufacturer's warranty stays valid all at the same time. In the Wrangler, you're going to find either halogen or LED lights. We've got an amazing tech group called the LED Lighting Group, and that's going to give us LED lights pretty much around the vehicle. So our LED headlamps, fog lamps, tails, and things like that. The bumper there is fantastic. This beautiful Jeep styling. We've got this beautiful metallic look when our fog's there. We've got our front tow hooks there as well. So we've got two tow hooks in the front. And then the style, the way that it looks, is going to be dependent on which model of the vehicle that you're in because you get into the 4xe and they're actually painted blue, which makes it pop that tiny little bit more. You're not gonna be confused when you've got a Wrangler coming at you. We've got this great looking front end. Now, one other thing that's available across pretty much the entire Wrangler lineup is an integrated trail camera. And that would sit just right in the grill there, which I mean, if you're gonna be doing some heavy off-roading, I would probably recommend you look at that option right from the factory. 
One of the benefits there, through the Uconnect media screen, we'd be able to select that camera to see what's going on in front of us. Now, the Jeep Wrangler is going to have some great standard features like skid plates, looking at the transfer case and fuel tank and things like that to help keep the underside of the vehicle protected if we're going off-road through rugged terrain and rocks and things like that. While looking at the 4x4 systems, we've got a few different options that are available. We'll find the command track in the majority of the Wrangler lineup with the rock track available on top of that. We've got stability bar disconnects, sway bar disconnects, and things like that. So one of the big benefits there is it's going to help level the vehicle out and give us improved traction if we are taking this thing off-road, which is amazing. Now, we do also have options for beadlock capable wheels right from the factory, or we could look at it aftermarket instead. And one of the benefits of that beadlock system is that if you're airing your tires down, that beadlock system is essentially going to make sure that the tire bead doesn't slip off the rim as you go. So very, very useful when you air those tires down. Like I mentioned, we do have an option freight from the factory and tons of aftermarket solutions that are available too. But I love these fender flares. These things pop and looks amazing. We've got all of our badges along the side. So we've got our trail rated badge. This one has a tubular step that's installed right from the factory as well. We've got beefier suspension inside of the Sahara and different types of suspension, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Taking a peek at the key fob for the Wrangler. So really nice look. We've got our Jeep logo right along the very back there. Pops nicely. Along the front end of the fob, we've got our emergency access key. We can also lock a few compartments there using this key, but we've got our unlock button, our lock button, the option for remote start, as well as our horn or panic alarm. Now, in order to be able to remote start this thing, as long as you've got the automatic transmission, you're just gonna push the circle button twice. You can see there it's remote started and then canceling. We just press that circle button once and remote start is canceled. And it's that simple being able to use it. Taking a peek along our driver's side here, we do have our heated side mirrors with the option for a blind spot system. We'll be getting one of the advanced safety packages, so it is nice that is available there if you want it. Taking a peek along the driver's side itself. So we've got a little button on the outside of the door here. So pushing that is going to let us either lock or unlock the doors, which is fantastic. As long as we've got our key fob on us. But taking a peek on the inside, so we'll start off on the door here. We've got this nice stitching along the door that follows all the way through at the dash as well, around the steering wheel. Looks fantastic. Now we do have our handle there, basic lock unlock button, base door unlock. We've got our side view mirror controlled as well, little handle. And then we've also got our door storage there. So we've got our pocket storage, which is great. Now the seats inside of the Wrangler, few different options that are available. This one is the optional leather seat, but we'll get into the seats in a moment. But this gives us the flexibility of adjusting what's going on with our lumbar support. We can also adjust our seats. So we can move it up and down. We can adjust our backrest. And then we've also got a bar right in between our legs there. Brighten up a tiny little bit, there you go. So we've got a bar there if we need to move the seat forwards and backwards as well. But on the inside, you can see we've got a series of different buttons available here. This is gonna let us figure out what's going on with our running lamps. I always just recommend keeping to the auto setting. We can also toggle our fog lamps on or off, and then we can adjust what's going on with the brightness of our cluster screen as well, which is fantastic. Oh yeah. This thing is spacious. The seat is comfortable. I did mention we've got a few options for the seats and it's going to depend on which trim level you're in and which options you've added on from the factory. We've got cloth seats, leather lined seats. We've also got full leather seats. So it's going to depend on what do you want out of your vehicle? But I love it. We've got our Sahara seats here, which I mean, this tan color looks really nice. We've got a Sahara badge right along the middle, obviously because this is a Sahara trim level of the Wrangler, but really, really nice overall. Oh, this is cool. You know, looking at the amount of space inside of this thing, it's actually really, really nice. Like I'm six feet tall, so hold on, with the seat. Okay, that's down as far as it'll go. Up overhead, okay, so this is interesting. Up overhead, I've got, like my head is maybe about half an inch or so roughly from touching the bar in the back here. So I'm six feet tall. I guess I might have the seat forward typically a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So with the seat set up the way that I typically would, 
Okay, the back, not as much of a big deal now, but I've got maybe... Oh, what's that? Towards the back end there, three, two and a half, maybe three inches of head space. So not a ton of space up overhead, but one cool thing, we can pull that little release on the side there in order to... Oh, well, I mean, we can go back pretty much just like, look at this. I can, like take a nap inside of this thing. This is wild. That's actually really cool. All right, so we can nap if we wanted to inside of our Wrangler. But I mean, having the headrest back, or the seat back. So yeah, same thing. I'm like three roughly inches of headspace there. So, I mean, if you're like 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 6 maybe, you'll probably comfortably be able to fit inside of this model of the vehicle. So we've got our assist handles, driver passenger sign for the first and for the second row. Oh, this is nice. I mentioned we've got that white stitching. It follows all the way throughout parts of the dash there, all throughout the steering wheel. Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen of the Wrangler. Now, a few things to point out before we get started. This is the optional 7-inch cluster screen we're going to find inside of some versions of the Wrangler. Outside of that, it's going to be a little bit smaller, like a 3.5-inch compared to the 7-inch here. And inside of the smaller one, it's not customizable, whereas this one is. So... If you are looking for a walkthrough on that screen, if it's available, check down in the description below. Otherwise, let's dive into it. So, a few things to point out. The wheel inside of the Wrangler might be heated, or might not, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. This specific one does have the heated steering wheel option, and we've got our switch just off to the side here. So we've got our little switch here, in order to toggle the heated steering wheel on off. But it's nice, like, it feels really, really good. But let's go through some things. The steering wheel itself is going to be manual telescoping. So just by your left knee, you can see my fingers kind of pointing there. We're just going to drop down telescoping. So in, out, up, and down as necessary. Once you've got that perfect position, click it, log it back into place. Now, stick on the left-hand side. We can flash out our high beams. We've got our turn signals. On the right side, we've got the option of adjusting what's going on with our front and our rear windshield wiper on top of that, which is great. Now, you're going to have a series of different buttons here that are going to be dependent on which packages you have inside the vehicle. So on the right-hand side here, this is for a regular cruise control. So we can toggle the system on, off, etc. Once you've found your perfect speed, you're going to increase, decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. But we've also got the option for the adaptive cruise control system. So we'd have a series of other buttons that were available here. The one in the middle there would essentially turn on that cruise system, and then we can adjust what's going on with our distance as well. So if you've got the Wrangler with the adaptive cruise control system, it's really straightforward to use, but you're going to increase or decrease your distance there. If you want to walk through on how to use the adaptive cruise system in Jeep vehicles, check down in the description below because I have put together a comprehensive walk around there. But buttons off to the left hand side are going to be standard across the Wrangler lineup. So serial two different pads, I guess we've got the main directional pad, which is going to let us move through the cluster screen. Now we've got this mini pad off to the side so we can answer or hang up on a phone call. We've also got our voice command prompt. So by pushing that prompt, we can do things like change songs, radio stations, we can navigate using our voice. If we were hooked up to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could also do a longer press and hold there in order to be able to activate either our Google or our Siri Assistant. So that is nice to know. But, my guys, I love the look of the wheel. It's nice, the wheel actually does feel really comfortable in the hand too, which is great. But we've got some other buttons too. So let's go through these ones and I'll show you a few others. So a few buttons here are going to control what's going on that screen. So let's zoom in a tiny little bit and focus you in on that little cluster screen. Perfect. All right, so what we're doing is going up and down, back or forward, or pressing OK. So we've got our main screen there. So we go up and down between subscreens. We can also press if we want to have our digital screen showing kilometers or miles per hour. So it's just a single button press there to activate. Moving down, we've also got our vehicle information. And then you can see there, so as we go through some of these other screens, we've got multiple screen views. So this is just a single view, but when we go down to page two, we've got this other little one right along the bottom there. And that's going to let us move left and right now between different subscreens. So we've got our tire pressure. We can also tweak that out so it's showing bar, but we can adjust it up to PSI, which I'll show you in a second. But we've got our coolant temperature, transmission temp, oil temp, oil pressure, oil life. And you can see on some of these things, we can also reset. So in order to reset, you're changing oil yourself, etc. We just press and hold the OK button in order to reset that out instead. Moving down, we've got our off-road status. So we can see what's going on. You can see as I rotate the wheel, it's going to adjust out and let us know 
how much we have the wheel turned, which is fantastic. From there, we can also see our vehicle pitch and roll, so we can see what angle the vehicle's currently on. So again, very, very useful if you're off-roading inside of this thing. Moving down, we also have our fuel economy. So we've got fuel economy as well there, so our range. So we've got a few options, but all we have to do is we want to reset. We just press and hold OK. And you can see there, it's okay. I defaulted to not really a great average, and that's because I'm literally just sitting here. But that's going to be dynamic, just based off of what you're doing with the vehicle. Moving down, we've got our trip counter. So trip counter A versus B. And same idea, if we want to be able to reset any of these counters, we just press and hold OK. And a few seconds in, and it's reset it for us there. Moving down, we've also got our start-stop system. So we do have the flexibility of turning that start-stop system off. It's going to be dynamic, so whether or not that happens. So the start-stop button itself, just off to the side here, so we can see that little A button there. But it's dynamic in the sense that the start-stop system's not always going to turn the vehicle off, so temporarily. But it's just because we've got cooling going in the vehicle, so it's essentially up to the vehicle when it's going to actually turn the, the engine off, so with that start-stop system. And moving down from there, you can see that we've got our audio as well. Down again into messages, so if we had any messages available in the vehicle... And then we've also got our screen setup, and then back to our home. So screen setup, if we press OK, we've got the flexibility of adjusting what's going on with certain elements of the screen, which, I mean, I love that we've got that flexibility. So if you wanted to adjust some things, it's what do you want to have showing? Do you want to have the digital speed up there? Nothing showing, compass, time, etc. You've got different options for gear display. So do you want to have it single versus full? You can see on the bottom there it's updating to either have all the gears available, or just a single gear available. So it's going to be a matter of preference what's showing up there, but it is really cool that we've got the flexibility to adjust that. And like I said, upper left, we've got the flexibility to go upper right. We can bring everything back to the factory default there instead. So if we played around with it too much, we can adjust it. We can show or hide our, our odometer on top of that. Moving into our favorites menu to show what's showing on that screen, we can kind of adjust out there as well. We've got our gear display, which I did show you earlier. So it is nice that we've got that available as an option, and that's right from the factory there, which is kind of cool. And like I said, this is the larger 7-inch screen, which gives us that customizable flexibility. When you get the other one, the 3.5-inch instead, it's not going to have the same custom, uh, customizable options that are available. But a few other things to point out. Along the left-hand side, we've got our tachometer. Along the right-hand side, we've got our speedometer. You don't have the option from the factory in order to be able to adjust this out, though. So this is going to be just a regular analog gauge. So if you're going out of the States, whatever the case may be, you do have to rely on the digital one in that screen instead, or you're coming up to Canada, etc. But you can also see we've got our current mileage there. So how much mileage do we currently have on the vehicle? We've got all of our transmission temperature as well as our current fuel levels there off to the right side. And you can see there, we've got another little gauge off to that side there. So are we in too high, four high, neutral, or four low? And that's all adjusted through this little guy. So let's brighten you up there a little bit. So you can see there, we've got a few different shifters. So we've got our main shifter there to change between park, reverse, neutral, drive, or our manual mode. And then we also have the additional shifter to go too high, four high, neutral, or four low. Too high is where you want to be the majority of the time. Four high if you're in like snowy or like icy conditions. Neutral, obviously for neutral towing, whatever the case may be. And then four low if we're going to be doing like aggressive rock crawling or heavy towing and things like that. So we've got a ton of different options that are available inside of this thing, which is fantastic. But one other thing to point out, and that's what's going on in behind the steering wheel here. So we've got a few different pads that are available. So the one off to the left hand side, it's so cool. But we've got a pad there off to the left side in behind the steering wheel. So a series of buttons there. That one's going to let us change between all of our different stations there. So you can see we're going currently between Sirius XM stations. We can push in the middle there as well if we wanted to jump between all of our different presets. And then off to the right side of the steering wheel, we can also press in the middle here if we wanted to change out sources. So we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. And then we've got our volume rocker. So, on the left-hand side, we can adjust what station we're in, so we're seeking there. Off to the right side, we can easily adjust our volume if we need to. Next up, taking a peek at the media screen for the Wrangler. Now, we do have two different options that are available. So, we've either got the Uconnect 4 screen, which is a 7-inch, or we've got this one, which is the Uconnect 4C, which is an 8.4-inch that also features factory navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. 
So if you're in that seven inch screen, just go in knowing you don't have the option for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but you at least will have some other base controls versus this one. We've got a ton of other options that are available. So I'm gonna walk you through everything, but let's dive into it. Let's have some fun. So first thing to know, we could see right along the very top there, what's going on with our temperature. So we can see if it's different driver, passenger side, whatever the case may be, we can easily adjust that one out from there. So that's easily done right down through the center stack there. So you can see we've got our climate control settings. But along the very top that does adjust, we've got our outside temperature there, and we've got what current time it is. Now, if we wanted to, we could also press the time there if we want to adjust our clock settings. We can also adjust it through our settings sub button along the very bottom right hand side. But this I'm going to say is going to be the home screen, but it's going to be just our base media. So we're audio tab there. So the 2023 Wrangler is still on the old Uconnect 4 4C system. It hasn't been upgraded to the Uconnect 5 as of yet, but let's go through. I'm going to show you everything you need to know. Along the very top, you can see we've got our either AM, FM, Sirius XM preset. So we can easily adjust what, what source we're using there. We can also press select source if we wanted to change out to an auxiliary cable. So that 3.5 mil jack, or we can also go to USB. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would also show up as an available option there, which is amazing. But you can see there, we've got AM, FM, etc. If we wanted to, we could tune to whatever station we want to, and then we just press and hold. You can see there, it's saved it in. So if we want to save presets, it's done very easily that way. We can hot button press if we want to get into our little map there again, or just hide. We've got our HD radio. We can browse all of our available presets there as well. So we can see what stations we've saved in. If you're not a fan of a station you've saved, you just, just, you just delete it, which is great. I love that we've got that flexibility. But you can see there we've got 12 individual presets. And I did mention it's going to be different for AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. So we've got all of our different presets that are available there. Slightly different on the Sirius XM, which we'll get to in a second. But we can tune this way. We can tune by typing in the station this way if we want to. There's a voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so we can also tune to a station that way. And we've also got our tuning rocker down here, so crazy the amount of ways we can tune it. We can push audio here in order to get to some audio settings, which I'll get to in just a moment. We can, I did mention select source, but when we go into Sirius XM, we've got a few other options. So we've got our replay, we've got our favorite. So if a song comes on that you love, you can add in the artist or the song if you want to, which is great. And what that means is when the vehicle recognizes that either the artist or the song is playing, it's going to notify you and let you know, which is amazing. We can replay current song as well. And I did mention we can tune that way. Now, we jump into our audio settings and we've got a series of other ones. So we've got our balance fade, so we can easily adjust out there if we want to. We've got our equalizers, so we can adjust what's going on with our bass, mid-range, and treble. I find that this is usually a pretty good setup. Oh yeah, some smooth yes, there we go. But it's nice we've got that available as an option. Speed adjusted volume. So because we're in the Wrangler, it can get a little bit noisy, especially with the top down. But what's going to happen with our speed adjusted volume, it's automatically going to adjust the speed as necessary. We've got our volume offset and we can also auto play when a USB device is first connected to the vehicle. Moving back out, that's the basics of our audio. Like it's very, very straightforward to be able to adjust because we're in Sirius XM, we can now see all of our channels. We can do a genre game instead. We've got all of our different presets that are available. We've got our favorites that we've selected for favorites. We've got our alert settings. So whether or not we want alerts when our artist comes on, we've got our game zone. So we can select what games are playing and our featured list. So classics, discovery, etc. So a ton of different options that are available looking at audio. But next up, moving into our climate control settings. So we've got a series of different climate control settings down the screen. So right underneath the screen there, but we've also got some audio or some, I should say climate control settings available here. We've got our max AC air conditioning. We can circulate. We've got our auto mode front and rear defrosters. And then we could right through the screen, adjust what's going on there, or we can do it down below as well. So we've got some options there. Now, one thing we've got this little sync button. So if our driver passenger side is different, if we hit sync, it's going to default us to whatever the driver's side is. We can have it change to our windshield face feet, some sort of combination, which is a button we can also access there as well. So we've got that option. Same idea, we can adjust what's going on with our fan speed, adjusting there and things like that. We can turn the whole system off. 
But we move into our controls, and the controls that you see here are going to depend on which model of the Wrangler you have and which features you have as available as an option. Because, I mean, obviously, if you didn't have a heated steering wheel, this wouldn't show up. But it is nice that we can adjust that as necessary, turn on our heated seat for both the driver and for the passenger side. So you can see there, it does let us know what's going on with each seat and with our wheel. We can toggle off the auto dimming rear view mirror. We can show our backup camera there as well. And then if we had the integrated front camera, we would also be able to see that front camera right through the screen. But one thing I love is just how beautiful and clear this screen is. Like this is really, really nice. I love it. Well, that's great. So we've got that available as an option there. And we can also jump into some more advanced settings, which we'll get to when we get into our settings screen down below or to the side there. So we've got our climate, we've got our controls, we've got our app screen now. And then app screen, I essentially want you to think of that like more or less every available option inside the vehicle just laid out differently. So we've got all of our Uconnect apps. So we've got our travel link, projection manager for phones, our hotspot, backup camera, off-road pages is a really cool one. Let's kind of play with that one for a second because that's neat. Now, the off-road pages, not standard across the entire vehicle lineup, but it is cool that it is there. So it takes a second or so for it to load up. You can see there, current version numbers, but we can see what's going on with our steering angle as we go. We can also see what's going on with our transfer case. So are we in too high, four high, four low, etc. We can see our current GPS coordinates and our altitude. So if you're going off-roading and you've gotten lost, you could call emergency services with your GPS location if you need it. You can see all of our different gauges, which, yeah, we could see through the cluster screen, but it is amazing that it's all laid out here for us. Really useful when you're off-roading. Equally as impressive, we've got our pitch and roll, so we can see what's going on there as well. You're going over rocks, whatever the case may be. We can see exactly what's going on, so it's really, really cool we've got that available as an option there. So, like I said, off-road pages, not standard, but it is really cool we've got that available as an option. And we do have all different sorts of options there across the board. We could also just kind of do a drag and drop if we wanted to replace different things, which, I mean, I love it. We can adjust it right on screen here, as you saw there. So if you want it in a different spot, we could do that. We could drag any of these apps down here. So if you don't care about certain ones, we can do a drag and drop in order to adjust, like getting rid of the controls, adding an off-road pages down here instead. So you saw there, it's just a simple press and hold, and we can kind of adjust and drop them out as necessary. And that's even for adjusting the order of all of these different buttons down there. So really, really cool. We've got the flexibility to be able to do that. Next up is our navigation. So we do have factory navigation inside of this one. And as you can see there, we've got our pinch to zoom, and it's actually fairly responsive. The map is a little bit dated looking, but it is cool that we've at least got factory navigation available here as an option. You can see there, switching up between all of our different modes. We can also zoom in and out as necessary this way if we want to. Really, really nice. We can exit out there if we want, very simply. Pushing the menu button here also lets us go between a few options. So we can do our 2D. We can go full screen if we want to. We can exit out of full screen. We can go into our menu in order to be able to search this way. So, I didn't mention, we could press the voice command prompt if we wanted to go that way. We could also just start typing in an address this way, which is really nice. We can exit out that way. We can search by GPS coordinates. We can call We can look at emergency services, check out our information to figure out where we are. So we can see exactly where we are there, our GPS data as well. Backing out, we can see our country, our country information, home and work addresses are really useful because if we've got that set up, one of the benefits there is we can push the voice command prompt and say, navigate home, navigate to work and it's going to navigate to the addresses we have saved here. So it is nice that we've got that available as an option. Where to, we can search for different point of interest icons. We want to go to different restaurants and things like that. We've got that flexibility. And we just hit route two. Oh, actually, before I do that. So we've got places nearby, business information. If our phone was connected, we could call, and we can also save it as a favorite destination. But if we go route two, it gives us our route in order to get there. If there are alternative routes available, it'll also show us. We can go fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly, all the same, which is why we have no differences there. And we hit go. Proceed to the highlighted route. So you can see there, we're on our way. So it's really straightforward there. We can kind of do a drag there. Look at map views again in order to change it as we go. We press back. We've got our main settings there. We can push this to go full screen instead. We can mute guidance. We can stop. We can pause. Look at settings. So if we stop, yes. 
and the guidance is stopped there. So it's really straightforward. Now, if we go to our menu again, we can go where to search. We've got our recent addresses now, and we've recently been there. So we can do that. Please proceed to the If we wanted to restart again, so it's really cool. Now it is nice as well because inside of our cluster screen, it also is going to show so a procedure route. So essentially like a turn by turn direction right in the cluster screen when we get the seven inch digital. But I mean, you saw there, really straightforward to use. We push this, we've got some navigation settings. So we've got our map set up, which I mean, we saw this earlier. We can adjust what view we've got. Our map appearance, how do we want that showing up? Do we want to display our current street, city, for our destination, do we want to have our time of arrival, how much time we have remaining, or what our total distance is that's remaining? Our auto zoom. So as we get closer to our destination, do we want the vehicle to automatically zoom in or out as necessary? We've got our vehicle icon. Oh, that's cool. So we can kind of adjust out what we want our icon. Oh, that's really neat. What we want our icon to look like. That's kind of cool. We've also got our point of interest icons, our categories, if we want to show all of these different options here. We've got our traffic info, we've got our speed flow, we've got our 3D city, terrain, park areas, railroad cities, rivers, etc. So you've got the flexibility of really adjusting the map and making it your own, which, I mean, I love it. And we've got a series of other different settings, but I mean, for the map by itself, these are going to be all of our different settings that are available. But I mean, as you see there, quite a few options, which is nice. Push the nav button again in order to get back to the main nav screen as well. So quite a few different options there. But I mean, it is nice that it's so simple to use this all at the same time. And then we could jump out of there if we wanted to. But that's how you use factory navigation inside of this thing. Next up, we've got the option to add a phone. And as you can see there, currently no phones connected. So what I'm going to do is, yes, let's add a phone. And we're waiting for us. So we've got Uconnect showing up. Hey, pin numbers match up, so pair and yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to hit don't allow for now. And perfect, there we go. And it does tell us there. So we've got the iPhone connected, which means that if we press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, it's going to activate our Siri assistant for us there as well, which is great. So we do have that option available. We could see recent contacts, keypads, things like that. Along the very top, we could see our battery level, current connection status. We can reply with text messages as we're driving as well, which is great. So it is really straightforward. We can hit phone there to go back to the main screen, navigate through. We can look at our pairing options. So our phone's going to pop up in our cluster screen. We can enter do not disturb, look at all of our paired phones, and then we can go to our projection manager. So again, same thing. We go to paired, and it's going to also give us the option of going paired audio or projection manager. But if we look here, we've got some sub options. So we can disconnect, make it our favorite, or we can delete it. So I'm going to leave this thing connected and show you what happens if we have multiple phones connected in a second. But we can also pair this up for audio there as well. And then we've got our projection manager. So projection manager for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. So that's one of the cool things is that this screen also does support Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Because we're in the Uconnect 4C, it still is a wired connection. So all we're going to do, insert our USB cable. Opposite end of the cable, we're just plugging ourselves in. And watch this. Do we want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, we want to allow that. Otherwise, when we lock, CarPlay just wouldn't work. But as you see there, it's working. And that was super quick to pull, to pull up. And I mean, it is really nice. Like, it is super clear inside of this and really responsive, which is great. I love that. So we're on the main screen here. We've got whatever map application was last open. So watch this. It's currently showing Waze. But if we go to, uh, let's go Apple Maps. It's going to default to Apple Maps instead. We can search, look at destinations. We can change 2D, 3D, head up, etc. Pushing this button brings us back to our main screen there. And then we push Waze and it just defaults us to Waze. We can search for addresses, use our voice command prompt. We can adjust the screen out this way. And then very similar so we can increase, decrease this way. We don't have pinch to zoom capabilities, unfortunately. And that's the same for all map applications, whether that's Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever the case may be. We do have to hit this in order to zoom in, out, etc. So something to think about there. We do have to zoom in and out that way. We don't have the pinch to zoom at all on this thing. But I mean, it's nice. We've got our podcast there so we can listen, browse, look at our library as well. Jump back home into our audiobooks and so many other things. Now, 
Not every app is going to work inside of Apple CarPlay, but there is a pretty extensive list that is available. And then one really cool thing about CarPlay is that we could adjust it. So if we go to our general settings, we go to CarPlay, we look for a vehicle, so you connect, we can forget the car, we can disallow CarPlay while the phone is locked, and then we can also customize it. So if we customize, you can see there, we could adjust, actually let me do this, watch this, boom. And if you want podcasts up there as well, so we can easily adjust these things out as necessary. If you delete something, it removes it from the screen completely, but it does save the app. And if you've done too much, like let's say if you've deleted one too many things, you're like, oh, this is crazy. All you're gonna do is hit reset, reset home screen, and it's just gonna bring you back to your factory default there instead. So really straightforward. You can see there we've got our map, we've got our gas parking, etc. We've got our podcast, we've got our, oh, that's cool. We've also got our calendar showing up there as well and a series of other options. Now, in order to get back home, we could just go to any of these other buttons. We hit our settings along the bottom. We can go to our Uconnect apps there instead. And then if we go into, I want to go to Projection Manager. So you can see there, we're currently connected. We can disconnect CarPlay as well. So let's say if you don't want CarPlay and you just wanna use our regular phone, that's how you're doing it. So you're just disabling there and you're set to go. Next up, setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, you just have to get to your phone there. And we just want to get to paired phones. So if we were, let's say, on any other screen, we're on our regular phone, we can just hit pairing, paired phones, and we're there. And we just want to get into our add device. So we're just going to hit add device there. On our other phone, we're just going to pull up Bluetooth. And we've got Uconnect showing up. Pin numbers match up. And I mean, you can see there, we're connected. Now, I'm going to say no to contacts and messages, but as you can see there, do I want to make it my favorite? I'm going to say no for now and watch this. We go inside here and we can also make it a favorite. So one of the benefits there is who gets connection priority? So if both phones are in the vehicle, who's going to get connected to first? And that's the same for phone as well as for audio. So if you want to have your iPhone connected for audio, and then your phone connected for your phone calls, you've got the flexibility to be able to do that as well, which is fantastic. But you can see there we're connected. So if we jump back into our phone now, you can see I'm connected to the Galaxy. We can see our battery, current connection, do not disturb mode, things like that. We can jump into pairing. We can jump back in here. If we wanted to be able to delete things and then projection manager, currently just connected, well, previously connected, I should say, to CarPlay, but setting up Android Auto is literally the exact same process. So we're gonna take our USB cable, plug ourselves into that USB port. Opposite end, we're just plugging ourselves in and unlock. We wanna go next and we're just waiting for this to kind of do its thing. So, I mean, three, two, one, and we are fully connected there, which is amazing. You can see we've got our settings, and this is the same on the Apple side too. So we've got settings, root options. We've got our podcast along the bottom. We can see what's currently going on with our media suggestions. If we have any active notifications, we can also have our Google Assistant showing up there, or we can do a press and hold on the steering wheel to have our Google Assistant go that way. So it is nice. We've got that as an option. Hopping inside here, we've also got our Google Maps. We've got podcasts. We've got our music and things like that. So one thing, this phone does have Waze installed on it, but I mean, as you can see there, I only have the option for Google Maps. So as of right now, we don't have Waze connectivity here as of yet. Like, fingers crossed it happens soon, but as of right now, 4C, you're, uh, you connect 4C, you're not getting um, Waze inside of this thing. And certain apps will work through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Other ones, you're going to have to be physically connected or over Bluetooth in order to listen. So streaming certain things, you'll have to be connected over Bluetooth instead. But I mean, you saw there, really easy to set it up. We go into our settings if we want to. We can go into our apps, projection manager. And you can see we've got both of them connected now. I can just simply disconnect there if I want to. And I mean, three, two, one, the phone is disconnected. For Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, we've got both paired devices still. So deleting a device, I mean, you saw it earlier. We've got our options there. We can delete. Yes. Delete. Yes. Boom. And it's fully deleted from our paired phones and we can also delete it now from our projection manager all we need to do is click forget click forget and it's deleted everything right from the vehicle here 
which is fantastic. But that's how you set up either an Android or an iPhone device inside of the Uconnect 4 screen. All right, so that's, well, everything you need to know about setting up a phone. You can see there I've deleted the phone, so nothing connected. And now we've got some advanced settings. So language, we can change between either English, French, or Spanish. We can change out our display as well. So as of right now, a lot of these things are grayed out, and that's because we're in auto mode. So if we go manual, we can also adjust a few other things as well. So auto, manual, etc. We can also select different themes. So if you like the look of a different theme, we can play around with this a little bit, but I mean, that is kind of cool. That is really cool. We can kind of customize the theme a little bit. So nice little skins there that are available. Series of different options available there. Touch screen beeps we can turn off. We've got our control timeout. We've got our turn by turn directions also showing up on our cluster screen. So we can disable that if we want to. We can have our phone pop-ups showing up, so any messages we get in that cluster screen as well, and then our Sirius XM weather alerts. And that's the basics of the display. Units, we can also go US metric or custom. So do we want kilometers or miles? Fuel consumption, do we want to have it? Miles per gallon, liters per hundred, etc. Tire pressure, let's go PSI, and do we want Celsius or Fahrenheit for our temperature? We've got our, our voice as well. So do we want either a brief or detailed response? So when we push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, so you can see there we've got our command prompt. This is the command list. So do you want the command list always showing with help or never showing up? And then whenever we do things like change songs, radio stations, etc., do we want to have a detailed or brief? So brief essentially is more like an advanced mode. From there, we've got our clock, which you saw there, we could press the clock button there in order to change clock settings or we just get into it from settings and clock. We can sync it with GPS, or we can manually adjust it if we want to. We can show time in the status bar along the very top, yes, no, etc. Moving back, we've got our camera now. So we've got our backup camera delay. So when we've got our backup camera going, when we go to drive forward, the delay means that it's gonna stay on for a few seconds. We've got our guidelines there. So whether or not we want the guidelines showing up or not is gonna be a matter of preference. And then we've got our fixed camera guidelines there. So fixed versus active are two different ones. So fixed means that it's going to stay fixed as we turn the wheel versus our active. As we go to turn, you can see there, it's going to adjust it out on the fly there, which is great. So it's, I honestly, I do recommend the active rather than the fixed. It's just an easier system, I believe, I think personally. And from the layer, we've also got safety and driving assistance. We've got our hill start assist. We've got our mirrors and wipers there as well as our lights. So lights, headlight delay. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want the light staying on for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, or just turning off automatically? When we approach with our key fob on us, do we want the headlights to illuminate? Yes, no. Do we want to activate our wipers, our headlights with our wipers? And then we've also got our flashlights. So as we go to lock the vehicle, do we want our exterior lights flashing there? Doors and locks. Do we want the doors to automatically lock as we drive away? automatically unlock do we want to flash our lights do we want to sound our horn do we want to sound our horn with a remote start and then passive entry so as long as we've got the key fob on us we've got that little button on the driver's door we can push in order to be able to get inside and from there we've got our seats in comfort so we've got the option of turning on our heated seats and steering wheel when we remote start when we start all the time or do we never want that to automatically come on We've also got our auxiliary switches. So we've got, oh, that's really cool. So as we power up all of our auxiliary switches there, we can have it for latching or momentary as well for a battery or ignition source. That is really cool. So if we want floodlights to come on with our battery or when we turn the vehicle on, we've got that flexibility. That is really cool. We've got four switches that are available right in the right uh, down the center stack there as well. But you can see we've got our volume rocker there. Oh yeah, so smooth, yes. So we've got our volume rocker. We can also turn the screen off there if we want to, just by pushing this button. We've also got a bunch of climate control settings here. So we've got our front versus rear defroster, heated steering wheel, heated driver's seat available, passenger seat as an option. Do we want to go into our windshield face feet, some sort of combination, air conditioning, circulation? Do we want to adjust what's going on Woo! with our fan speed? Do we want to turn the fan off or do we want to have the vehicle determine what the, uh, the temperature should be inside? We've also got our tuning rocker down here as well, so we can easily adjust out this way if we want to. We can mute out our audio. We can toggle off our engine start stop. So the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time. We can toggle on our traction control system, so on off there. 
We've got our hill descent control. We've also got our screen off. So we can turn the screen off a few different ways there. Let's see, we've got a 12 volt power point there. We've also got some different media options. So this is really cool. Love the like old school flip style there, but we've got two USB ports. So a USB-C as well as a USB. We've also got a 3.5 mil jack there. So I love the fact that we've got this available as an option in Jeeps. So we just plug in one of the old auxiliary cables there if we want to. Because this is a Jeep, we can take our doors off. We've got all of our window controls there as well. We can also kill off power to those rear windows if we want to. We've got a little tiny storage tray down there. And then we've also got four individual auxiliary switches. So if we're wiring up things like floodlights for off-roading, whatever the case may be, you've got the flexibility to adjust it. And then through the media screen, you can also adjust certain things like do you want it running off of the battery, ignition, things like that as well. It's really, really cool. But one thing I love about the shifter, hold on as we drop down, we've actually got a few different ones that are available. So we've got our one shifter here, and this is going to be to change out between two high, four high, neutral or four low. So each one of these modes is going to do something different. You're going to want to be in two high the majority of the time. If you're going through like deep snowy conditions, four high, neutral, obviously, and then we've also got our four low setting. So four low is useful if we're doing like rugged off-roading, heavy duty towing, things like that. From here, we've got the shifter. And I mean, this thing, it feels really nice in the hand. And I don't know if you, oh, there we go. Hold on. Look at that. We've also got this like old school Jeep inside of this thing as well, which is really cool. But we've got this like red little button along the side. I feel like a men in black almost kind of, it's kind of cool. But we've got our little shifter there. And again, feels really nice park reverse neutral drive or we drop over in order to get into our manual mode in order to switch out gears this way if we want to two individual cup holders here we've got like a little phone storage area i would probably say as well so it's kind of neat we've got that as an option and then we've got an armrest that has multi-tiered storage it's like a multi-level marketing storage it's kind of cool but our main storage area there we've got a little removable tray out from that we've got actually a boatload of space yay deep and we've also got another USB power point in there as well. So that's kind of cool because we've got power points everywhere. We've got our USB power points in the center stack, USB power in here. And this, as I just noticed, is also lockable, which is great. Moving up overhead, I did mention. So this one does have the auto dimming rear view mirror, which we could turn off that auto dimming function right through the middle screen. We also do have, I've got to show you this. This is really cool. Okay, so before I get to the roof, because this one is slightly different, we do also have our assist and our SOS mode overhead. We've got a garage door opener. So if we've got one at home, we can easily program that in. A little business card holder in the front and the rear there. Visor with a vanity mirror, built-in lights. And this thing is going to stretch out to pretty much block all of the sun that might be hitting your eyes as you go, which is great. But I did mention this roof is kind of different. When we look at roof choices inside of the Wrangler, we've got the option for a soft top, Hard top, we've got a tri-piece hard top, and then we've got this, which is the Sky One Touch. It's really cool. So, just gonna go into our accessory mode there. Watch this. Uh, let there be light and overexposure in the camera. <laughs> so, this thing, like panoramic sunroof. How far back does this go? Damn! That's impressive! Look at how far back that goes. Just opens things up like so, so nicely, which I mean, I love it. That looks really, really nice. This is what happens when you forget to shoot all of the video. We've got a slightly different interior, slightly different haircut because we're a couple of weeks after shooting the first part of the video, but second row inside of the Wrangler is actually fairly spacious. Like, so I've got the driver's seat set up for myself, six feet tall. And then like realistically, like I've got a good amount of knee space, good amount of foot space. And like up overhead, boatloads, boatloads of head space. So like six, four, six, five, you'll probably comfortably be able to fit in the second row of this thing. No problem. But when we look at third, like, because we do have three seats back here, like, could you fit three full size versions of me? It might be like a little bit tight for whoever's in the middle seat, depending on how like broad shouldered they are. But I mean, realistically, you could do it. Like you'd be able to do it no problem. It's really, really straightforward there. 
but I mean, the seats all around, like even in these slightly different ones, they are very comfortable at the same time, which is great. But feature wise back here, we've got a little cabin control light up overhead. We've got some different things with the door itself. And I did mention the doors in this thing, first row and second row can be fully taken out, which is great. We've got some pockets behind the first row seats. Ooh, I love this. We've got our cup holders back here as well. Really, really nice. But this is good overall. I said like the seat comfortability is fantastic. I like it. Now, if we look just behind the armrest for the first row, we've got some basic vent controls there. We've got our window buttons so we can roll down our windows for the second row seats. And from there, we've got a few USB power points. Ooh, boatload of USB power points. So we've got two USB, two USB-C, and then there's a 115 watt traditional wall outlet back there as well. Filling up fuel inside of the Wrangler is straightforward. So along our driver's side, non-locked cover, and then our we at least have a physical cap. Now, if you're concerned about fuel theft with the crazy prices the way they are right now, you could look at some aftermarket locked options there. So just the key that the essentially a locked cover that goes in so that people just can't twist in order to yank it out. So that is an option if you really want it. And if you're concerned about fuel theft. Now, when we look at fuel quality, the majority of the Wrangler lineup requires just regular 87 octane. So regular gas is all you need to use in pretty much everything, but the 6.4 liter. So if you're after that 6.4 liter Hemi, a premium fuel is where you want to be, like 91 minimum octane. But towards the back end of the Wrangler, we've got this great looking style, which again mimics what we're going to see in a good part of the Wrangler body there. But we've got our plastic bumper there, and then we've also got our rear tow hook. Single rear tow hook, and like I mentioned, we've got our two in the front on top of that. But good styling throughout, we've got these great looking LED tail lamps. The lamps that you're going to get are going to be dependent on the version of the vehicle that you're in and which packages you've added on. One thing that's going to be standard, though, is our full-size spare tire, which really beneficial if you're going to be going off-road because if you pop a tire, it's nice to know that we've got one rear-mounted in order to be able to change out as necessary. And then we do have our backup camera right in the rear-mounted tire there. In one of the safety groups, we do have the option for that reverse sensing system, so the beeping that we get as we back up which is not going to be standard across the Wrangler lineup, but it is available there as an option. So if that beeping is something that you want, just go with knowing you can get it done at time of ordering from the factory. We've got our class two hitch receiver, our four seven pin wiring harnesses on top of that. When we look at towing capacity inside of the Wrangler, 2000 pound max towing capacity when we're looking at the two door. When we get into that four door, we're maxing out at 3,500 pound towing, which is pretty dang respectable. Getting into the cargo area of the Wrangler is straightforward. So we've got a little button along the back here. We're just going to push that. Pop it open in the main base and then our separated glass. So very straightforward to pop this thing open. Now, obviously with this thing being the four door, a little bit more space back here, but you can see that we've got two individual buttons here. So the full latches, I guess I should say, the first one is going to fold down the headrest. So we do have that option if we want to just to fold down the headrest, or we can pull down the second one, and that's going to let us lower the seat down completely. Look at how much more that opens things up when we've got that second, uh, second row seat folded down. Now, it's not a complete flat fold, but, I mean, it's pretty dang close all at the same time, which is nice. Now, there is one thing that's kind of unique here, and that's also the flexibility to pull this down, which is gonna show us our cup holders for the second row seats when we do. It's pretty cool. Looking off to the left-hand side, we've got a 12 volt power point back here. Other than that, nothing off to the left. We've got some books along the floor, so different cargo hooks. Off to the right, we do have our Alpine woofer in the back here. So this one does have the upgraded Alpine sound system, which sounds incredible. Now on top of that, we've got this piece here, which is locked into place. So we lift it up, but we've got a little storage tray. We've got a little piece along the bottom here as well. We can pull out and that's going to show us our jack stand. So if we ever need to change a tire ourselves, that's where we're going in order to make it happen. And then just easily reinstall the piece there, which is great. The top's open. The road noise actually isn't, again, like I'm only going 60 right now, about to go up to 80. But like the road noise in this thing is actually not bad at all. Going over some bumps. Not too shabby, but here we go. It 
Same thing. Respectable pickup and go in this thing. And this is just the regular 3.6 Pentastar. Like I can only imagine. So the Jeep has the option for the Rubicon 392 where you've got the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. Like night and day amounts of power inside of that thing. But I mean, this is still, it's like I said, respectable amount of power inside of it. Not too bad. And like I said, the road noise, I am, I'm like shocked at how quiet it actually seems inside of this thing right now with the roof open. That's really cool. Huh. Look at this. B E A. Beautiful. Oh, this is really nice. Really nice. I, like purposely trying to go for bumps, but like, I get it, it's a new Jeep, but I mean at the same time, like this suspension is amazing. Cool, I like it. That was a look at the 2023 Jeep Wrangler. Technically just the Sahara trim level, but a nice walkthrough on the basics of everything you need to know about the Jeep. What did you think? If you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below and let me know. And as I mentioned, you can find the build link for this specific one or link off to Pickering Jeep's website down in the description on top of that. But if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care. We've got our bumper there with our single rear tow hook. And that's a going, and that's a gonna be. <laughs> And then also links off to Pickering Chrysler, who is the partner which let me use this vehicle for the today for the.